Bio 20 and welcome to our final muscle video on fast, slow and diseases. So we're going to discuss the types of muscles and then you are going to do a little bit of a deep dive on some diseases that you will find in your notes. So today's learning intention is understanding how muscles use different pathways, much like last day, but essentially this one is now looking at what types of muscles. So fast twitch and slow twitch and identifying activities that use either or. We're going to watch a video, I'm going to link it again in, called Catching Kayla, that talks about a young girl, uh, Kayla Montgomery, who is diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. So you're going to watch the little video about what happens when she uses her muscles as she is a long distance runner. So let's get this started with muscle fibers. We know muscle fibers are part of those muscle fiber bundles. They're a group of muscles and we have two different types. We have one called slow twitch or type one muscles and they are our aerobic muscles. It means they contract really slow um, and they resist fatigue because they can withstand more endurance. So things like the back, your back muscles helping you stand right upright with posture all day. Okay. Your ab muscles also helping with posture. Okay. Those are muscles that fatigue very slowly. Moving your hand while writing with your pencil, you may eventually get a muscle cramp, but essentially you can do it for a long period of time because you have a lot of slow twitch muscles in your arm. They essentially tire out when all the fuel is gone. So when there's no more ATP. And they tend to have these types of muscles tend to have way more mitochondria because then they can with they can go through aerobic respiration more often and feel with ATP. They're also very vascular or what we mean by having lots of blood vessels. So they're a very reddish color. Fast twitch muscles, on the other hand, are type two aerob anaerobic or anaerobic muscles. Okay. They are essentially adapted for uh, the generation of power. So you want to think sprinting or weightlifting or swinging a hockey stick or swinging a racket, okay, that quick burst of energy. These guys have little to no myoglobin, so therefore they don't have any oxygen really being brought to the process. So no oxygen means it's undergoing anaerobic respiration. They also have a lot less mitochondria, so again, not the ability to create ATP through aerobic cellular respiration. So they fatigue very, very quickly. So this is just a graph and you have a space in your notes to show just the different types. So you have the length of time in milliseconds and then the force and the strength of the contraction. You'll notice that the force and the strength of the contraction don't change. A muscle contracts, a muscle contracts. There is a threshold it has to meet before it will contract. But once it contracts, it contracts with the same uh, contraction uh, strength each time. So what you see here is an example of three different types of muscle groups. We talk about slow twitch and fast twitch. There's also what we would call intermediate form, which is kind of a nice blend of the two. And you have then muscles that can undergo uh, resisting of fatigue and last for longer, but are still used for power gener generation of power. So something like your calf muscle, you can use your calf muscle and build it up to be more resistant to fatigue, but it still will fatigue over a, a period of time. Your eye muscle, for example, would be an example of a fast twitch muscle. Uh, it reacts very quickly in time and it contracts and then it goes back down to its relaxed form. Something like the deep legs of deep muscles of your legs, okay, not your calf, but more like your quads. All right. Those are more slow twitch muscles. They can resist fatigue a lot better and they can last for a longer period of time. So this is just a graph that I would like you to fill out in your notes that talks about and, and compares the types of muscles. You're going to have to skip um, the part, there's a little bit of a written section about atrophy, we'll get to that in a second, but just go and find this lovely beautiful graph. So the contraction speed is slow, for slow twitch is obviously slow, and for fast twitch is fast and how they got their names. Fatigue wise, slow twitch muscles resist or slowly fatigue, where fast twitch quickly fatigue. You got a couple different types of activities you can do for slow, such as long distance running, biking, swimming. Fast twitch muscles though, again, are quick things, sprinting, weightlifting, swinging a hockey stick. And glycogen is just the energy level storages. So glycogen levels uh, are very low, I shouldn't say low, but they're lower and fast twitch is higher. 
The color for the slow twitch muscle is deep red, where the fast twitch is light in color. And that has to do with the lack of myoglobin available. Mitochondria mounts, you see lots in slow twitch because they're aerobic muscles, where in fast twitch, there's very few because we're an anaerobic muscle. The blood supply for slow is very vascular, so you see tons and tons of vessels, but there's a lot less vessels in a fast twitch muscle. So going backwards in our notes a little bit, there is a space that talks about atrophy, which is the kind of the start of the disease section for us. So we now know how muscles contract. We know where they get their energy from, and we know that there's a couple different types. There's smooth, cardiac, and uh, I'm blanking, smooth, cardiac, and skeletal, sorry. And then within skeletal, you have both fast and slow twitch muscles. Now we're going to talk about what happens when your muscles don't work properly. So there's something called an atrophy. Atrophy is the reduction in size and tone or the power of the muscle. So if your skeletal muscle stops receiving stimulation, for example, you break your arm or you break your leg and it's in a cast and you're not using it for a little bit of time, what ends up happening is your fibers actually decrease in size and they actually become weaker. Over extended periods of time, atrophy can be very dangerous and lead to the lack of use of certain parts of your body, such as arms and legs can atrophy so bad that you can't lift them up anymore, okay? But you can have atrophy that is a temporary reduction of a muscle when you don't use it for a short period of time. But you can gain back that muscle if you start reusing it. In your notes, you have an entire chart that discusses a bunch of different types of muscle diseases. You're going to do a little bit of research and you're going to give yourself a little bit of information about each of those because we're going to talk about them later.